Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about a very interesting topic. Let's say you wanted to know when a TCP connection is being created on your server, what's going on. So for instance, you have a server that's not functioning right, or you want to know how much it's able to handle a SYN attack or a SYN flood, which is not necessarily an attack. Or in general, you just want to know uh, what part of the kernel uh, code gets triggered whenever you're initiating a connection toward a server on the server side. You could be interested in this because you're uh, debugging a bug or a performance issue, or maybe you want to implement a certain feature inside the kernel. For instance, hypothetically speaking, let's say you just wanted to um, uh, add a statistic about how the SYN or the, the, the TCP state machine handles the connections. For all intents and purposes, the, the, the end goal here is to be able to get from a a problem uh, specification, sorry, to the actual line in kernel code that's impacted by that problem. So the approach that I'm going to teach you to do is a very interesting approach uh, that would require uh, as minimal knowledge as possible. You don't need to know the kernel code, and that's the power of this method. But you need to know your um, workload. You need to know, you need to be able to trigger a workload that would impact that particular um, feature that you're targeting. Let's say in the case of SYN requests, you would have to write a test case or a micro benchmark that would generate probably many um, connection requests. TCP connection request to generate the SYN uh, and send it to the server and you know just be able to reproduce that 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 path of code and, and re-trigger that path of code in the kernel. So in this example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that by writing a um, Python TCP server and a Python TCP client, which just sits in a loop and sends connection requests, and that's all. Uh, this is very easy to do. There's plenty of stuff in the web that you can use. Actually, let's try that right now. Um, so I'm just going to Google it. Um, Python, TCP client and server. Second link that, that pops up. There you go. This is a echo server. This is the server side. And this is the client. I'm just going to copy and paste this code in, in my... Uh, application and just just run it easy as that or you can develop your own uh, so for instance here I've done it so here this is the server part I just got it uh, this is my server part I just got it from this website and then the client part is just the the client part of it it's basically to create the socket and send the connection request and then I do this in a for loop of a hundred times that's all it's just a Python script. It's very easy to run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this. Um, the other thing is that we need the uh, Google, uh, the the um, sorry, the Linux source code. So I'm just going to say Linux on GitHub and Linux troubles GitHub pops up. So we can go there and actually we would have to clone the code like this. So you can copy this and open a terminal. And in the terminal, you will just say git clone and then paste this, right? Which is going to create a Linux folder and I'm going to clone the source code here. So actually I've done that already. So it's inside my Linux folder. And this is actually the, the Linux source code. So if I do a git status, uh, you'll see that I'm at the version 5.13. If I do a git tags, git tags, sorry, you see all the 
different branches of uh, Linux and you can look for, let's say 419, right? There you go. These are the 419. So you can just say git checkout v419. You can just say git checkout v, uh, sorry, same thing, 419, and then press enter and would check out that branch of kernel source code. I'm not going to do that. I'm happy with the 5.13 one. And I'm just going to use that for this example, the 5.13. Uh, so I do have VS Code open with the kernel source, source code here. I'm just going to use this, right? Let's go back. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my server. And then I'm going to run my client here, which is just going to do this 100 times. But at the same time, I need to now have a way to find out what part of the kernel code is being impacted. If you remember in another um, uh, video, I talked about how we should go about doing this. So this is exactly what I'm going to do now. I'm going to be doing perf count uh, statistics. Basically, we, I'm, I'm just going to get the statistics of the different uh, events that are happening in the system like that. So I'd say pseudo perf stat on all CPUs and only these events. And I'm just narrowing it down to the TCP related and SOC related events because I know it's going to be in one of these, right? But if you don't, you can include more subsystems and then it will just show and, and like the counts for only one of these would, would go up. So let's just run this client one more time and run this. Oh. Sorry. Let's see if we, yeah, this is still running. The client is still running. We'll just wait for the client to finish. Finished. Control C. There you go. These are my uh, statistics. So you can see that in particular the TCP probe and the TCP destroy socket, obviously, when we're turning down, tearing down the connection and the inet sock set state which actually rings a lot of bells is popping up so these are the ones that i have to uh, be concerned about these are the places in the kernel code that are being touched by my test case and this is where i should look into so i'm gonna look into this one because it looks like this is related to the uh, setting the state of the socket. So this is going to be related to handling the TCP uh, state machine. Let's say if I were wrong, then I would check here. I would check this one, right? And then I would check this one. But I'm going to start with this one. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically, I can actually go in the source code. Let's just do that. Copy this here. Let's go to the source code and search for this. And the source code. There you go. So we, we see the trace points being triggered here. INET socket set state and set, uh, state restore. So these two places. But the issue is that I don't know what actually calls this parent function and what calls that parent function. And that par this is just one small piece of the entire flow of execution that leads to this state change but i want to see a little bit more than that i want to see where things really start get get interesting instead of this function deep deep down somewhere in, in the kernel so i want to know what led to this now that's actually the definition of a stack so when if i had the stack the call stack for when this event was triggered then i could actually see right on the stack maybe towards the middle of the stack or the bottom of the stack, who's actually making the calls into the, this, this inet sk set state function, which, which is actually triggering this trace point. That's exactly what I'm going to do with perf. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a uh, perf trace for the same this this particular uh, event of interest only. So it's just going to be this event. So it's much, much less impact, right? Uh, it's just going to be this one event, and I'm going to do a call graph on it and uh, 
just this dwarf is basically be able to is, is a way for the, the call graph to be unwound by perf right so let's run the client again try hitting that spot the test case is running i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna be quick control c because this generates a lot of data you see like 14 megabytes of data just with like less than a second or probably less than two seconds of trace so we got the data so let's say perf let's take a look pseudo perf script and okay i think showed up let's see what we have here we have the perf data okay so the problem was that uh, there were no samples collected there were no so maybe i was too quick in finishing the test i'm going to do it one more time but before that let me restart the uh the server's starting let's just restart the server a clean slate and then start the client and go here to start this guy it's going to give it a little bit of time probably enough okay let's give it another try okay we have stuff so i'm just going to exit then do the script there you go so this is the trace and these are packets sent and received by teams application well i'm interested in the python one doesn't really matter uh though but let's just look at these so the python ones are, are these ones so you can see that this is being triggered here that's the event and and this is the stack leading up to that event so actually interesting to see it starts here in ellipsis start and then goes into some python code python related ish, uh, code as you can see and eventually it leaves python uh, makes a system call exits to user mode exit to user mode and then does a socket close and different things right so it does different things but what should i look for this uh there is a lot of information uh, in this event as well the the, the family of the protocol is internet the protocol is ip protocol tcp uh the, the source port is 60162 destination port is 10,000. so this is actually from the client going to the desk to the server what i'm interested at is what i'm interested in is the sin requests that go from the server to the client so s port should be 10,000. so i'm just going to look for that s port is 10,000. this is actually one so I mean, I can take a look at this. Um, this will be interesting. Yes. So this is going from the server to the client, and both on loopbacks. So I'm just gonna scroll to the end of that. That's actually going from a TCP established state to the TCP closed state. So that's not what I want. I want to go from uh, something to a sin received, right? So let's go. Uh, source port is zero this is the first thing that the client sends i don't want this uh this is again from the server yeah so this is tcp closed wait so I, actually this is interesting you can see how the connection management is is being done um let me just go further down and find what i'm interested in it's all from the client for now there you go that's one thing. source port 10,000 destination port zero. This is probably the very first thing because the old state is going from TCP listen on the server side to the new state, which is TCP send received. So this is the first moment that the send packet is being received. That's the first thing. So let's go there. And this is the stack. This is the stack for it. As you can see, it goes up the ip stack um ip this that ip receive and then eventually ends up in the tcp v4 receive check request send receive interesting so maybe this is what i want to look at okay that's the function i found my sh function here so this is where I received since the first place I, I was looking for the first place that TCP handles send request 
that's it. That's what I got. So I'm going to take this, copy this, and go actually to my kernel code here and search for this. And for the IPv4, um, there we go. Three-way handshake is complete. We got a valid synac. Now create the new socket. So this is basically... Uh, this is the place where we actually do the transition. So we've 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 passed that already, but we're doing the transition into the uh, the the created socket state, right? So this is that place. So I want to, if I want to do anything like in this part of the code, then I can just you know that that's the part of code that I should be looking at. Anyways, so. I can actually do more drill down if I want by performing f trace function tracing. Let's just do that. I'm just going to sudo su and go into the and use f trace. It's easier for me to do it that way. So sys kernel debug tracing. <clears throat> and here, let's just say. I'm just going to do this very quickly uh, in favor of time, but I could do a separate video on how, how to use ftrace, but that's not the purpose of this one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off tracing for now. Just make sure it's turned off and then uh, empty the trace buffer, empty the trace buffer, and then set this to function graph tracing and then uh, basically uh, what I want to do is I want to trace only this function. So I'm going to send this function to a set graph function. This is just a filter. It just means that do a function graph tracing for this particular function downwards. Uh, and then I'm going to enable tracing by writing a one into this file. Just going to run my script again here uh send a storm of connection requests and go back here and then stop tracing and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to come out of this root mode and then i'm going to basically copy the trace that i collected to this file here and this is the way I do it I, I kind of I use cat because of the way that these trace buffers work uh, and then I'll do a vi on trace 2 and you can see that there you go this is the function and this is the function graph so these these are the nested functions that are called from this guy so it, it actually goes like this so this is more than the stack because this has time as well so TCP v4 send receive sock is actually calls this one first and it goes on and on. So you, you, can, you can actually uh, see the actual function trace of the kernel, how different functions are called uh, when a send request is, is handled and a socket is about to be established. That's all. I'm not going to get into the details of uh, ftrace. This um, deserves its own video, so I'm just going to do that in a different video. That's it for now. I just wanted to show you that how we can get from a concept idea or a, an issue of concern, let's say sin handling, to the actual lines of code in the kernel that are responsible for uh, handling this. Thank you for listening and watching my channel. Please give this video a thumbs up. I'd like to hear your comments. Put your comments down below and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. See you in my next videos. Bye-bye.